Okay, I want to do a quick update. As you can see, there's my box, and I have the one inch um, insulation in there. And it's uh, the kind that was recommended, I can't remember, but the, the uh, it's not the pink stuff or the blue stuff that they say will melt. Again, I'm copying a lot of other people online, so anybody that has a video on about solar prior to uh, July of 2013, I probably watched it, so thank you very much. I just kind of put together my own afterwards, my own idea of how I wanted to set it up. So in my case, I put the insulation inside the box. I saw some people put it on the outside of the box. But in this case, I put it inside. And as you can see, there is my riser pipes with my header at the top, the footers in behind. And currently, that is all sealed right now. And you can't see it. The gauge is actually backwards. But I have uh, 30 pounds of air pressure in it right now. Um, just double checking for leaks and that is on the upper end of what cop would normally would stand I believe in a boiler system the relief valve is set to go off at 30 pounds so I figured I'd max it out make sure um, that it wasn't going to have any leaks probably somebody that knows more than me would say that it could go a lot higher or I shouldn't go nearly that high but um, that's what I know about uh, know about it in a boiler system so I figured well I'll put the 30 pounds on it um, what I did, having lucky enough to have a pool, is I did dip the header in all under pressure and the footer part of that riser into the pool and there was absolutely no air under 30 pounds of pressure sealed. But I left it over there, keep an eye on the gauge. Um, even while I'm doing this other stuff, I figured I'd leave it on just to make sure. And I might even check it one more time in the pool again. So that's where we're at. I'm getting ready to actually to slide the um, riser pipes back in the box so I can mark the two holes that will be on that side, one in this corner and one up in that corner. They actually will be stubbed out. You can see one of them right there. That will be stubbed out for future collectors for adding on. Now that I left a lot longer obviously. And, uh, of course, that zip tie will come off. I just did that for support, which is right there. Um, and I'll cut that to the length I need when I build a second collector and add on. So that and the one at the bottom will be sticking out that far side of the collector uh, in preparations of a second one. I figured do it now. Saves you a lot of, a lot of work later on, cutting the tees and, and changing things over. And that's how I'll make them as I continue to make collectors and lining them up on the roof. So, well, I'll leave it at that. I'm going to slide that in, get the holes cut. Once I get it all together with the, the pieces in there, I will uh, show you because I had to do something a little fancy on one corner. In fact, I guess I could show you right now a little bit. Because of how tight it's going to fit into the box, I think I talked about in a previous video, that is the only um, shark bite connection I use because that's going to be in the corner uh, down here and it was the last thing that I would have had to solder and I would have had to have soldered that once the whole collector or the uh, riser pipes are in the box and if I do that with it set up just like this I'm going to be soldering you know right on top of that insulation right in the corner of the box and I don't really want to be melting my insulation or burning the box or, you know making all kinds of a mess so I decided to use one last one and then I can slide that last pipe in through the edge which I'll show you that in more detail in the next video so thanks again for watching and see you in the future